Okay, YouTubers, here it is. <laughs> Give me a uh, little example of a just another loop, homemade loop that you can use. Easy to make, really light, super light. I put it on a cardboard box so I can explain some things to you guys about making them. There's a lot of confusion about them. Uh, a lot of people are afraid to tackle them. They they want to think you want to build a monstrosity like that, and they don't have the ability. You know, maybe they don't have saws or tools. You know, stuff like that. I made this out of cardboard and some wire. I used uh, some PEX pipe, like we did on that one, just to hold the wires apart, and some hot glue, and I'll show you it's all hooked up uh i'll show you the uh there's the cable you might you all might remember that if you bought your sdr uh you got it with one of these little antennas all right ain't worth a crap <laughs> but the coax is uh that's coax right there so we just throw that out of the way that's junk we use the coax here we go pull that in there Run that into the SDR, okay. And then we got it hooked up. And we're gonna start down here at one megahertz, all the way down here, long wave. Sorry about the shadow. Uh, medium wave, and there's uh, 160 meters of ham. And uh, I'll show you, if you wanna build one of these, we'll step through it here. Um, a lot of people were shy of it because they don't want something, you know, that big or whatever. Well, you can, and that, this is what I did. Uh, it's just a TV cardboard box. Uh, and I put some hangers on it, okay? You can hang it right up on your curtain rod, right, right there. Let it hang down. I put the capacitor on it, and here's the uh, value, a 1099. I got it on eBay. Uh, for twenty twenty two dollars not bad uh, they had another one that was similar uh, th for 15 but this one looked near so it's the same one I had in the other video uh, I was gonna add to that one and it just it was too much and almost blew up my SDR uh, but yeah um, here's all the connections uh, this is what I did so you can all see this is your plate side all right, and then this is your ground side here. All right, and I'll show you on the other side here how it's hooked up, so you can see the connection. So we just took one one lug from this rail, okay, and then we take the other lug from the uh, other rail, which is the other fins. So this this let me turn it. And you can see here. There we go. Take them totally out of, there you go. There's the fence. So, this plug here, it's just a connection. I, it was just one of the screws. I put a, put a little connector on it, right there. And then attached it to that one. And then attached the other end of the loop there to this one. And this one was a dual capacitor, okay? It had two. And you can see the connection. Uh, you can see where they split apart right there. Well, I just connected them together. Okay. I just went ahead and connected them both together so you get the full capacity of the capacitor from 10 to 99. You can see the other connection there. That was the factory connection to connect to right there. Get a little better view of it. There you go. And I didn't use that because it's only using half of the capacitor. Uh, so I went ahead and jumped it. If you get one of these, this is a dual capacitor. This one over here is a single. Right there, that's a single capacitor. It's all one. You know, you can see it, it was built in two, but it was factory connected as one. So that's what I did with this one. It was, con it was just connected together. And then what we'll do, uh, I got it hooked up, but I wanna explain a few things. Um, you know, I've been testing with this. Uh, so, sorry about the camera, guys. I know I'm having to hold this. But I've been testing this one 
uh, this is my kind of like my test platform. I had a really big loop on it before. You can see up here uh, where I had all the connections. It was a lot bigger. And uh, um, I played around with that. Here's the main loop. And I wrote the, I wrote the uh, formula down for you guys and so that it's, you can see how easy it is to make. Um, but uh, this is your coupling loop right here. You connect it to the coax. Just like that. Okay. That's all it is. You just take that shield from one side. There. Wrap it all together. Connect it to there. And then the hot side coming out. Connect it to the other side of your coupler. And it couples. This creates a magnetic field here. And it, of course, circulates. It encapsulates and couples to this. And then that kind of gives you your your base for how big the antenna is. This one here is 39 inches across. I cut it down a little bit. It was hanging over quite a bit with uh, before. And uh, I just wanted you guys to see how easy this is. It's, it's easy to make. You can hang it up on a curtain rod and it's out of the way. <laughs> uh, slide it up underneath your bed. Uh, what I got this in here for is I'll explain later. Um, I, I left them in there to, for examples. But here is the formula. You take your diameter of your loop, whatever diameter you make, and you kind of want to make it resonant on the frequency that you're going for. You're not going to get them all, so you got to kind of pick. Okay. And 39 hits about 12 meters, hits 80 meters, uh, it stops <laughs> close to 40. But you still get some resonance on 40 with this. All right. This was cheap to make, guys. Cheap. I bought this. Actually, I got this uh, house wire. Uh, this is just house wire. It was three conductor. And I cut it, the sheath down, and ripped all the wire out of it. Each one was its own conductor. Uh, it had the white. I used the ground and the black out of it. It still had the white. I had the white on there before. It was a thicker loop and it just didn't work as well this wire was thin so it didn't couple very good so i took it off but uh, i'll show you even this is not even the same length if you don't have soldering iron and you don't have solder because i know some people don't uh, i'd advise you to get all one length <laughs> I, I soldered these together just to make one long loop but what this is is a loop it starts here Okay, starts down right here, and that's what's connected over there. Okay, comes around and it goes through the, through all that and all the way around again, and then it picks up right here again, and it's just all connected. You just make it all into a loop, and then take the ends and try to get them as close as you can down here together, so that your connections here are close enough to get your capacitor in. I've tried it at different lengths. Uh, I had, like I said, I had it at bigger width, thinking a four foot maybe diameter, and it did okay, but uh, it wasn't resonant, uh, and we'll, I'll discuss that later with you, all right? And uh, so what happened was I shrunk it down to a more manageable size for the cardboard, and I, me I, I got a measurement of 39 inches out of it, I was trying to hit for 40, 40 inches. Now that don't mean 40 meters. It's just the diameter of the uh, uh, of the loop that you make. And this is just house wire, guys. This is cheap. If you don't have a soldering iron, get it all in one length, and then just make a loop. <laughs> Start with your ends and just make a loop. Make another loop, and you'll see the transition right here. See, it starts here, and then it works its way up. And then up to the next one, and then up to the next one. And I had another one on there, but it didn't work well. So, like I said, uh, it just goes around. And you can see where I soldered it together there to make a longer length. Okay, you can do that. It's fine. Uh, but you're better off with one single wire if you can do it. Uh, hardware store, it's cheap. I think I got this. I got this wire for free. Uh, it was a scrap piece, 13 foot long. So I soldered the two 13 pieces together. And this is what I found out by testing. Um, 
I took this piece <laughs> right here and I flipped it over here. Had it over here for a little while. It did make a difference. Uh, it didn't. It didn't couple as well, and uh, it was losing on the band. And I'll show you that over here. Whenever I fired up, and uh, uh, what happened was, uh, it just didn't couple couple good. So now I know why they have this on the inside. Uh, that, that I thought maybe maybe we can flip it out there and it would work, but no, it didn't. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, so we put our loops on the inside there, okay? You can put it on either end, but you got to have the capacitor away from that. So it's got to be end-to-end kind of deal. So, and you can lay them down horizontal, just like this one is. Just like it is here, it's, it's actually on. Uh, I can, well, let me hit the capacitor for you. I'm going to turn the capacitor and see if we can see. There it goes. See the noise floor come up right there it's not in resonant there but uh you can see it that it is working so i'll step you through on how how you can get your oh there's a little bit of resonance right there but yeah uh, i'll step you through on how to get that working uh and how how you can when you make it when you make a loop how you can find out where it is working and uh, we'll step you through that but I wanted to explain a few things. Like I said, that you can flip it. It does work, but it doesn't work as well. It's not very good resonant-wise. Uh, so inside is where you want it, all right? And this is your formula for it. So whatever your diameter of your loop is, which mine was 39, you times that by 0.2 on your calculator, and then times pi, 3.14. And then that gives you a length, a number length, like this one happened to be 24, 24 and a half, I think, on the calculator. And then that's what you make your length, uh, the 24, the length of that, and then you bend it in a loop. That's it. And it don't have to be thick like this either. You can use, a, you know, the same wire you use for the antenna and use that in place. It works. Uh, it makes your uh, bandwidth smaller. Uh, uh, and I'll explain that too. Uh, the thinner your wire, the more resistance. And loop antennas don't like resistance. So uh, the thicker the material you use, that's why I use this big old thick gauge, heavy copper, big thick stuff on, on this one. Got less resistance works better. So, but yeah, I, I just had this laying around. I, that's why I used it because it was thicker. But uh, you can do a single loop if you want just one one loop around of thickness like that but your your cue on the screen is going to be so small uh, the thicker your material the thicker your antenna thinks it is and I figured out how to trick these antennas these mag loops is by stacking them like this so that thing thinks it's that thick material but it's not so you're saving in weight, not having to use those big ground pipes. Uh, you can just use this, and it works the same. I've, I've, I've tried it. I've played around with it. I've tested it on this platform here real good. But you can see I started from the center. Okay, make your hole in the center right there. And then you measure out, you know. I took a few measurements so I can get my legs in pretty close to the same position not going to get it perfect but unless you're one of those guys but uh you don't have to be perfect uh i seen a dude online that had his loop all sagging and everything this piece here was as bent up as it is it was probably a whole lot better than his was his was kind of drooped and his worked still so you don't have to be totally perfect but you'd want to try to keep some symmetry to it i guess uh, but this is a trick. Uh, nobody's doing it online. I haven't seen it, but I figured it out. You can take thin wire and coil it up to make it spread apart here, so that 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 basically that magnetic field is going around this, and it realizes, hey, there's more there, and it thinks it's thicker than what if you were actually using a thick pipe, and it works. I'll show you on this one. This one's got a wide bandwidth uh 
man, and it's sitting on cardboard. <laughs> but uh, one thing with your capacitors when you order them, here's here's where it's getting. These capacitors matter. Uh, the size of them. This the size of them is going to place you in the band, and I'm going to show you that here in a little bit. Uh, but as you can see, this loop was 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 bigger, right? Uh, I, I it didn't work as well. It didn't resonate where I wanted it. So, and I'll show you how you can you tell if it's resonating. Um, I made it smaller, and uh, when I made it smaller, uh, I noticed it did not change where this capacitor was putting it on the band. So I tried hooking it to this one. <laughs> you see how small that is? And it still didn't change where where this capacitor sit on the band. So uh, I'll show you that here. It, it didn't really move uh, from the band where it sit. I could make that loop bigger all I wanted or smaller even. And that capacitor kept that capacitance within that bandwidth. So the key to these is these capacitors. Uh, what number you get. Because this one seems to resonate in 12 meter. Uh, th this capacitor likes to hang out about 12 meters, 80 meters, and really close to 40. And I'll show that to you. But this one over here, it's a higher number, of course. Uh, it's a, This is a 60 to... 99, uh, 990 or something, uh, almost a thousand, 60 to a thousand, and it hovers completely down to 80, all the way up to 30, and almost to 20. It peters out about 20, which sucks because I was trying to get 20 too. So, but that's the difference. The difference is in the size of those, the numbers, where you want to be placed on the band. Uh, that's what I've figured out with these, with these mag loops. Uh, but I'll show you the connection again so you can see there. That's all it is. Just one shield of the coax out to one side or the other. And then that's just hot glue <laughs> holding that there so it don't move. And then I hot glued the legs down. The PEX pipe was cheap. Now, you might have to get a drill bit and a small drill uh, to, to make your connections, you know, your holes through the PEX pipe. But... You can do it this way too. I'll show you. I took the holes, but I also took a razor knife. Let me bend that out there and cut them in half. And that's so that you could, if your wire's real thin and floppy, you want to use speaker wire. You can uh, clip, make you know, clip each one through, and it has its, you know, you know, hold the wire apart, separated. Now, you can put as many of these as you want in there because they're not going to hurt the antenna at all. So, but that's a tip for you. And you can use that a razor knife uh, to just half your pipe. You don't have to put the holes in it. And use the pipe itself to squeeze the speaker wire. If you want to use speaker wire, you can. I was going to use speaker wire. But it, it was a little floppy. It was a little more harder to deal with. Uh... It, you're going to have more time if you build one out of that, but it would be cheaper. <laughs> so, um, but this is easy to do, guys. This is just a TV box. Used it as a platform because this wire is, you know, not very sturdy. You can see it flexing. Uh, and uh, it, it works great. I'll show you over here. You know, like I said, I used different sizes of the loops, and it didn't matter uh, what size it was when I hooked it to that that number 1099 uh, uh, of capacitor that's what that is uh, it basically never left 12 meters uh, or 80 it was weird I was, you know you go from that size to that size I thought that that would shift it in the band and it didn't all that is is you're making your size of your diameter for resonance on whatever frequency you're wanting. So uh, that is the key to these. That really, that thing is going to place put you where you want in the band. Uh, but the, your antenna uh, diameter 
is for just resonance. That's it. Uh, as long as you got your formula correct for your uh, outer loop there, for your coupler loop, uh, it doesn't really matter what size you make that. It's going to resonate somewhere. I guarantee you. So there's just an idea. Now I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to put this. I'm going to do some editing on this one. And uh, I'm going to pause this and um, get it hung up. So you can see it hung up. And then uh, uh, I'll bring it back. So hang on just a minute. Okay. I hung it up on the curtain rod. It's not heavy. Not very heavy at all. Then you got access to your capacitor down here. So you can uh, turn your capacitor right there. But that's pretty much, uh, you know, really light. The box just helps. If you set this out on its own, it would bend the weight of it. It would just bend. So the box is all it's doing is just a platform to hold the shape, really. Uh, that's pretty much all it is. So now that you can see, you know, it's not that hard to build and it won't be in the way. Uh, you really need to try one. Pretty simple to build. I just kind of, you can even guess at the diameter, to be honest with you. I've been playing around with these. You can guess at this diameter uh, because it's going to resonate all through the band because you're able to tune it. See, that's why. So you're not building it, you know, strictly for one frequency because... So you can, I played around, I, I went to 43 inches, I went to 51 inches I think I started out with, and then just kept working my way down, you can see where the different uh, places I moved it, you know, on the board, there's where, there's where the blue things were before, you know, so uh, I played around with the diameter and the damn thing still works in 12 meter and 80 meter, it's, it's still resonant, so... That diameter really, I don't think it's going to matter much. I, it it will for resonance and resonance. You need you need to build the diameter for the resonance. Like say you want to go for forty meters, then you probably want to stay with you know go with a resonant uh, diameter of that, which is the length. They say it's the length of the wire, but I had five wraps on this. Okay, five dips. It was out to here. And I cut half of it off, didn't change a damn thing. <laughs> so, length of wire is not your deal. What the deal is, you want this thickness. You want it, You want that thickness because that gives you a wider bandwidth. Instead of it being so sharp that it's just minutely out there and you're scrolling across your, your band. And it's just a small little spike. This here will raise the actual noise floor because it's thicker. It gives you a wider bandwidth. So, but like I said, that's the the best I can explain. And that thing, I think I added it up. I have $22 in the capacitor, all right? And I got the wire for free. And I found the box. Uh, actually, I saved it from my TV. It was underneath my... Uh, uh, couch for a while so you know it'd be pretty simple to do start center and then just kind of set where your legs are going to be and get your diameter from each end and that was 39 on this one you can see it there 39 and then 39 from this side to that side try to make it as equal as you can and that's pretty much it it took me a day to put it together you know with the drilling the holes in the plastic and but you can like I said you can just take a razor knife and cut that plastic in half and then bend it out and stick your wire in there it'll hold it in place just get you some glue set your posts in place your pegs in place when it's not hard to build and I'll show you here I'm gonna pull it back off the couch here so let me pull it off I'll be right back. Okay, here we are. I set it back down. It's really light. Uh, to be honest, there's no weight to it at all. <laughs> it's super light. You can set it up against the wall if you wanted. You could even hang it, put it on your wall, or 
put it on your ceiling. Uh, that's a option too. Uh, you can lay it flat, it don't matter. The null, if you're gonna fight noise, you might wanna stand it up because the null in the middle here, where it's dead, you can't hear nothing. Uh, you might wanna point that to your noise. So, you know, if you got a no noisy neighbor, if you're in an apartment like I am, my neighbor over here, boy, he, uh, he's got a switching power supply on here and I'll show you what it, it's killing me. But I'll show you, there's a little bit of it right there. Uh, you can see it on the scope. That's a switching power supply he's got plugged in right back there. But anyway, uh, I'm going to stop this video uh, on uh, uh, so that we can, uh, let me pause it here and uh, we'll jump over to the uh, screen and uh, I'll show you what this thing does on the, uh, uh, and, and how to tune it and how to look for it. And I'll show you everything you need to know about it here. So let's stand by here and I'll jump over. Okay, guys, got a set up here make this a little better for you guys just leave that camera still sorry about that shaky video um, it's kind of difficult to set everything up so it's better off for me to just uh, use my hands and get it done quick uh, I'm gonna set this up uh, so that uh, you can see once you get your ma magnetic loop built you know you got it working uh, you got it all set together you got your coax hooked up right here okay and this is our choke, uh, just a common mode choke made out of T or let's see, 43 material. Uh, I got a video on that. Everyone needs choked, so uh, check it out. Subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe and like. So let's step you through uh, how to uh, how to tune your magnetic loop now. Find out where it's resonant. So we're gonna start down here low. Uh, we're gonna start. I made the mouse bigger so you can see it. Uh, we're gonna start at one megahertz on long wave. Uh, this is long wave right here. This is our medium wave AM stations right in here. You can see nothing's happening. It's kind of uh, three in the afternoon, so this is not the most ideal time for um, uh, uh, for the weather. You know, for the uh, gray line coming in, it would be much better. Your nighttime is a lot more quiet. This loop is noisy because, as you can see, we don't have a ground hooked. I'm not going through a ground, so it's going to have some noise. But uh, let's scroll over here. And we're going to just going to grab the band and bring the band over. So here's 160 meters right here, our first hand band. Let's see if we can turn the capacitor and uh, watch the screen. What you're going to look for is this noise floor to jump, where you're going to see a peak up here and uh, uh, that way you know if it's resonant I'm gonna turn the capacitor oh see it move right there okay there's our peak one peak and that's on the back side of the capacitor uh, the capacitor as you the, the meshes come together uh, like such uh, it's all the way open, so they're basically facing away from each other. That's the back side of the capacitor, what you're seeing there. That's not our peak that we're looking for. So, uh, as you can see, no signals, not resonant, okay? So let's scroll up the band a little bit. We do know our capacitor's working, though, because we've got, uh, we've got, uh, we can see it. Okay, so let's scroll over. Okay, let's stop at the 80 meter band. All right, right there. Now we see our little bump right here. So let's go over to our capacitor and turn it. Oh, looky there. Okay, so our 10 to 99 puff capacitor uh, with our loop seems to be showing in here. Uh, at 80 meters seems like every ant every loop antenna i build uh it always resonates down on 80 for some reason i must be the 80 meter guy uh but yeah uh so now we can see our resonance and it came from the other way it came from this side of the screen so let's uh let's pull our band over okay so over here's 80 now we we pulled our 
band over here. So let's turn the capacitor. Oh, there it is. Okay. So now we know, okay. Now you know that you're resin it down here into 80, okay. You're gonna work all the way over. Let's just keep following it. So let's bring the band over. Okay, so here's here's where we were, here where we are now. Let's see how far over we can get it. Still go, oh, oh, see that right there? That's where we run out, right there. Okay, it wanted to, it, it started to go forward and then it wanted to come back. So we can, we have a range now between about six, 0.4 uh, on the scale to all the way to 80 okay but that's not all that's what's so great about these magnetic loops you might think oh well that's okay you know it's not much well there's more uh, I'll show you so we're just gonna keep going or taking our band over bringing it up on the 40 oh looky here we got some signal action that's resonant there as close as that is right there bringing that into resonance you can see the signals coming in right there a uh, few little peakers uh, granted I'm telling you this antenna is noisy because you can see the noise yeah, that's terrible uh, and you can see the noise floor you see where I'm pointing it's right here you're gonna miss a lot of signals uh, uh, because of that noise floor you want that noise floor to be down here you want you want this number to be as high as you can right here uh, without having to move it I can sh I can bring the noise floor down with the offset but the more the, the more uh, range you put in it uh, right here the better off you are that's what you're looking for you're looking for low noise high signals so you want this as low as possible and that to be up you can see it's killing it right here the noise floor is just well above uh, 50 so that's where you need to work on ground you need to you know that's that's how you know you know you need to get your coax here to ground okay that's that's one telltale sign there too plus we got noise that'll help take care of that noise too um, I can show I can hook up my loop and show you the difference it's grounded so all right so we know our capacitor stops right about here we're getting some resonance there. That's a pretty big signal coming through there to peak up all that noise. But uh, let's keep going. Let's keep scrolling. Because we know our capacitor stops here. We're not going to make it any further with it. So we got to find out where else it's resonant. Okay. So we're going to come down here. Keep scrolling down the band. Oh, looky there. Looky there. Here's 30 meters, and look what we got. We got a little bit of peak action here. Let's try it, turning our capacitor. Oh, yep, see it moving? Okay, so we're starting to come in. You can see I just took it all out. I'll bring it back around. There it is. Okay, it looks like we're starting to come in again right in here from this side, so let's keep working up the band. Okay, let's bring our capacitor with us. Okay, and this is what you do. You just find out where where your where your loop antenna is going to resonate with with different. If you want, you could try buying two capacitors at different and using them on the same loop, and it will change where you can listen to. Uh, that that's one key to. You know, you don't have to build another magnetic loop, a whole loop. You can just change the, the puff capacitor, you know. Puff the magic dragon there. <laughs> so, uh, we're going to follow it all over again. We're just going to keep scrolling. We're up now pretty close to 17, 20 meter now, I think. There's 20, yep. Okay, so let's see if we got any resonance on 20. See if we can bring our capacitance in. Oh, there's a little... Oh, <laughs> okay. 
this is good this uh, the, uh, that way I can show you this this is the back side of the capacitor uh, if I turn it you'll see it both come away and come together that's not good uh, that means we're not going to resonate that's why there's no signals peak peaking up uh, because that's not good no bueno all right I'm having a hard time hitting 20 meters uh, uh, I'm really gonna have to research what puff I need uh, of capacitor for that but all right so now you know let me uh, let me demonstrate it for you so you can see turn it just a little bit now you can see the bubbles going away there now we'll bring it back oh. <laughs> there they're almost together right there there you go I'm touching the antenna so you can see them that's how if you just touch that antenna you see that noise floor drop man that's high Q that means that you got a really good antenna uh, it's gonna work well but that's what that is that's where the back side of the capacitor that's where they're unmeshed it's unmeshed again it's not together uh, that's where the it meets right there so we're gonna be dead on 20 meters with this loop Okay, we're not going to be able to listen on 20. So let's keep scrolling. Okay. Not really interested in short wave, but uh, if you're using it for short wave, it's the same process. Uh, you'll see. We'll just keep going down here. Now let's turn our capacitor. Nothing. Oh, there we go. Wow, that's big time there. Okay, all right, now we know we're going to resonate on 17 meters, so we'll be able to listen there. All right, you won't be able to listen until you get this noise floor dropped. Uh, it, you almost need to be down to 80, 70, you know, you're kind of pushing, uh, finding little signals. But now you can see we got two humps, that's where the capacitor is starting to separate right there. So we should be able to follow that down. I don't know. Let's try it. Let's bring it over. See if we go that way. Yep, there it goes. All right. So we got more capacitance up here. Let's keep scrolling down. As you can see, we're uh, going up in band. Okay, we're up to 15 meters. And I'm going to tell you now, 15 meters, I can't get because I got noise floor that will not go away. Uh, you won't be able to see the capacitor work through that. Uh, the noise floor is too high. Uh, if you use a thinner wire uh, on your uh, loop, uh, the smaller your peak is. And that's, that's why you're always fighting that noise floor right there uh, because of that. Uh, and unfortunately, I'm out of 15, and I'll show you how I got another one, too. Uh, we'll scroll past this. Right there's our capacitor. See it? See the resonant signals coming through? You, you'll pick up signals, wherever you move at, you'll pick up signals that far away. Okay? On, the, on, on this screen, as you see it here. Uh, that's wide bandwidth. That's why you want that that thickness of co of uh, wire there. It, the thinner your wire, the smaller diameter of your wire, and the thinner that your uh, loop is, the smaller that's going to be. Okay, it's just going to be a, a little bit. You're not going to get resonance out here like we are here. See, that's resonant right there. That signal's coming through, so you'll be able to listen to that. I'll, let me tune it a little more. Go back. Oh, the other way. Oh, okay. So right there is where we're picking up again. Okay. So you might be able to listen in on 15 meter because I noticed on these uh, RTL SDRs that the that 15 meter band hangs over the shortwave broadcast. So those are people on 15 meter right there. They're talking. Uh, matter of fact, you can see some of the signal coming through right there. Uh, it's not noise. <laughs> But uh, let's keep going up because we we want to follow that. We want to follow our peak. Okay. Oh, look at there, 12 meters. Let's see if we can get there. Oh, yeah, look at it coming in. There she comes. 
Oh, we can park it right there. That is going to be good for 12 meters. You get rid of the noise floor, you'll be able to see people talk. You'll be able to see signals. If your noise floor is that high, uh, uh, that you're not going to hear. And that's just because this isn't grounded. I'm just showing you, you know, what to look for when you build one, what your capacitor is going to do. And so you can see this is working great on 12. You'll be able to scroll off to the sides, each side and uh, lower noise take noise out or in on signals that are bouncing on each side uh, right there so let's uh bring it over some more see where she stops okay let's bring our band over see here's where 12 meter was we're going up in band oh there's 11 meter cb range let's see if we can get into there Oh, looky there. She's going. She's going. Oh, <laughs> just runs out right there. You can see where the backside of our capacitor is coming in right about there. Here's our peak right here. So it's starting to open up. The capacitor is. Whenever you're turning it, it's starting to open up. Now it's bringing them together. So you're still resonant here. Uh, you might have a you might be resonant there. There's not many people talking on CB out here where I live. Um, uh, sometimes you get a signal, sometimes you won't. So, but uh, that tells you there. Now, I don't know if you can go up much further with it. Uh, here is why I don't talk on 10. I call this the cone of death. <laughs> Look at that. If you know what that is, uh, let me know. That is serious. That is backwards modulation right there. So that's peaking hard right there. And it kills my whole 10 meter band. I can have a little bit here and a little bit here, but I don't know what that is. That's in that's uh, in my location area here. That's all it is. So uh, <laughs> if you know what that is, that's, that's some kind of noise. I, it may be power line, uh, maybe a big old power line capacitor or something but it's just it will not move i can't it kills my 10 meter uh signal i got bad noise right there for some reason now we can go on up see if our capacitor picks up let's keep scrolling 32 yeah we're kind of getting out of range now let's uh jump up here yeah so you get above 50 it's you're not going to work so uh yeah so looks like we got quite a few bands out of this uh looks like our 80 meter works i got some noise there too you can see it never goes away it's always there but uh the noise floor will drop but that noise will always stay there right there don't know what it is it's probably a neighbor two doors down or something that's got a plug-in transformer or something but that's what you got to deal with when you're in apartments right <laughs> you got to figure out where your noise you got to run run these chokes a lot of them but let's see uh, let's bring our capacitor back down to 80 there we go so you know if you built this antenna at your at your, you know for what you're doing I want to find out if that comes back to 160 <laughs> is it gonna stop yeah yep right there okay so we pick up uh, right at uh, just a little over two gig or two megahertz there and uh, go all the way up so that from there I think it went to six six megahertz there that's what we found out so that's uh you you can tell why you want a magnetic loop because you're not building one antenna just for one band uh you can use it and scan through you can even use it on um uh, above 50 megahertz but the problem is you won't see a peak you won't see peaks like that uh it'll just be a solid noise floor and what you got to do there is let me show you um you have to tune for your uh, signal meter 
Uh, so you need to find a signal up above 50 megahertz. If you're up above 50 megahertz, you need to find a signal. And then you tune the capacitor to where this peaks out at the most signal. And that means you're resing it right there. You don't have near the play that you do down on HF, high frequency that you do up, up above on VHF. But I will tell you, my magnetic loop uh, that, the, that I built will resonate on 400. Uh, I, I can sit on 400 megahertz and pick up guys running 444, 445 area and not a problem. Uh, so my, my magnetic loop is resonant there just happens to be the right uh, diameter so you know that that tells you guys right there and shows you uh, it's not hard you know you buy a capacitor make you a loop <laughs> do your mathematical calculation for your uh, uh, smaller coupler loop and you're you're halfway there you know to getting your SDR way better signal and you can run this inside uh, you don't have to put this outside like a wire uh, you can mine sitting here on the floor and I use it a lot. So um, let me switch it over to my loop. Watch that noise for. That's my loop right there. That's the compact antenna. That's a seven inch antenna up on the roof. And it's picking up. <laughs> <laughs> seven inches of antenna is picking up on 80 meters which is a 236 foot antenna i think length that's amazing but it's still picking it up that's awesome but there's my loop and we can turn it there's the noise coming in from the transformer Here it comes. There's what mine does. <laughs> That's some serious capacitance right there. <laughs> That's uh, almost getting, that's probably getting the SDR warm. Yeah, a little bit warm. It's just pulling in so much that it, it, uh, uh, it's bringing it, parking it right on it. Now, if I shut this off, it'll take some of that noise away and you can see the signals coming through. There's a signal there. But yeah, it's that's that's a lot of capacitance. That's what a thousand puff will do. <laughs> so, you know that, like I said, uh, you know you need to find. I think the key to these magnetic loops is not really hard to make, uh, but really it's the capacitor that you buy uh, that's gonna give you. And don't think buying one of them vacuum capacitors is gonna do that. Give you that? No, it's that's not how it works capacitance is just by numbers there it's you know if you buy a thousand puff zero to five you know zero to five hundred puff what have you uh if you if if you've got a good good diameter uh and thickness of wire uh you'll get that that's what you'll get that's monstrous <laughs> i can pull that down but uh let's pull the range down but yeah, you know, I can run that all the way up to 40. I, I like listening on 40. So uh, 40 is kind of where I listen to. So, but, uh, you know, like I said, that's, that's a really good magnetic loop. And that, to be honest, uh, the one that we were just on, that's not bad. That, that thing's going to resonate at least on three to four different bands for you. So... You got some listening to do right there. Plus, you're going to pick up shortwave in between uh, if you want. But let's scroll on up to 40 here. Bring our capacitor in. There's the back side right there. That's the back side of the capacitor. Okay. And then there's our, uh, you can see the resonance. Those are all signals coming through there. You can even see them right there. One way out there. But uh, that's where I like to leave mine. Uh, 
I kind of listen on 40 a lot. So, but anyway, you guys, if you guys can build one of those and uh, get, you know, uh, you, you can get results just like this. It's no, it's not hard. And like I said, that thing don't weigh nothing. Shoot, you can pick it up with one hand. Move it around if you want. Oh, I put a choke on that back there too. That's what I wanted to show you. That's where the coax comes through. I didn't want to run it through the front there, so now you know how that works. And that just runs down. That's the uh, coax that came with the SDR, and I just cut it off that little POS uh, dipole antenna they come with. But that coax is good to use, so if you got it with your SDR, don't, you know, hook it up. It runs over there, get you a, a nice little choke, a little toroid, and you'll be good to go. But yeah, there you go. Like I said, there's your formula. Make sure, you know, that's the diameter of your loop. Whatever that is. Mine was 39 times 0.2 times pi. And that gives you your inner loop. And that's your coupler. That's what's going to hook to your coax right there. Comes through the box and connects in on each side there. Give you a real good look at that. There you go. And then that's just hot glue right there. Holding it together, keep it from moving. I even hot glued the uh, trans uh, capacitor down. It's perfect. It moves around, doesn't come apart. You can even lift it up with it. So, cheap to make, and it's easy to make, and it's multi-band. So, you guys, uh, you guys ought to think about maybe investing in one of these. I bought that PEX pipe in a 10-foot length. It was $2 and something. Uh, the wire I got for free, but you, if you have to buy that, uh, the, just the wire, buy Romex uh, housing wire and cut the sheathing off and yeah, use the wires. If you got access to the soldering iron, you, you can use this it's different lengths to make your wire up like I did here. If not, just use a whole piece. A razor knife uh, to cut you some slits in the uh, PEX pipe, cut your lengths that you need. And you don't need extra really tools for other than that. Uh, cardboard box, piece of PEX pipe, some copper wire, and a capacitor. And uh, a little bit of math, I guess. Find out what, you, what diameter you want your loop. You know, you can make it 39 just like I did mine or make it bigger, whatever. But the key is those, that's going to put you where you want in the band. And I... I don't have the money to test it, to order a shitload of those and test it, <laughs> or else I would. Uh, but I know this one will do 12 meter and 80 meter, and it will give you a little bit of resonance on 40. So, uh, hey, that's good. You know, I think 17 came in good too, if I remember right. I don't know. But yeah, that the number of these is what's going to give place in your band. My guess is if you get one that's 400, you know, like get you a 10, a 0 to 4, I wouldn't uh, take that number there. I wouldn't take it above 10 or 20. Uh, mine's, that one there is above 60, and, it, and uh, it's 60 to 1,000. And I'm missing out on just, I mean, just missing 20 meters by freaking a little bit. So I wouldn't take that number uh, but I'd go as high as you want on that number right there. That's going to give you uh, different ones. It gets you a 10 to 400, a 10 to 500, maybe a 20 to 600, or 20 to 220 even. You know, they, they have them all different capacitance. But that's just going to place you in your band wherever you want in the band. Um, 10 to 99 will do 12 meters, I know. And 80, you saw it, so... Uh, right there but anyway guys uh, this is going to be a long video so sorry about the length but anyway I, it's just something you could build yourself easy uh, you don't need a lot of tools to do it just some hot glue a razor knife and maybe some cutters for the for the copper that's it so hope that helps i'll uh, try to edit this video all together and get it out to you so anyway 73 guys have a good one.